I am the lawn engineer, and I and my family like to golf. And this year, it is halfway through October, and I said, I'm sick of stinking at golf. Starting over every spring, I live in the northern United States, where for about five months out of the year, we cannot golf. Not because it's cold, but because everything's frozen. It's very cold. It's not just, oh, I'm a little chilled. I have to wear a hat. Things are frozen and covered under snow. So the only way we can golf is with a simulator. So in this series, I'm going to take you through my simulator build in my garage right here. So I'm not just going to buy a kit and put it up. That'd be too easy. I'm going to build this sucker from scratch and bring you along the way with me. Let's get to it. You can see in the middle bay of my three car garage, I now cleaned up this wall. So everything that was here, I moved out. I moved it along this wall here. So I've got the workbench and actually I really like it in front of that window there. It gives some natural light when I'm working on some stuff. So the first thing I want to do with this wall, um, I've got the idea I would like to put some, uh, finish off the lower part here, protect this. I've always had that on my list. Um, so the idea here is I'm gonna put some, uh, a treated two by four on the bottom. The middle will be some corrugated galvanized steel. And then I'll probably do a top rail, of just a, a regular two by four. But even before I get to that, I want to finish this wall, so overall I want to do all of them in the garage, but uh, I need to mount my screen up here and it will be hidden behind that and everything. So I thought, all right, this is the time. Uh, I'm going to, I've taped the joints already. I'm going to mud the joints and the screws, probably put a coat of paint on this thing. Did my joints, screws, through a skip trowel texture on the wall here. Let's get, throw some paint on it now. All right, got the paint through on there. Let's move on. Next step here is I'm going to uh, do sort of some Wayne's coating up to this far to protect the lower. I'm going to do this. I've wanted to do this uh, in the garage for quite a while. Um, this drywall is very susceptible to uh, bikes. Uh, that's the kids, right? I never do that. <laughs> bikes, golf balls, things like that, that can come in here in a high rate of speed and destroy this stuff. This was fairly protected because it was behind my workbench. But anyway, I want to add some protection um, up about three feet in the garage here. So I'm going to start with this treated two by four. I'm going to go up here with some corrugated steel and then cap it off with another two by four, kind of a chair reel deal at the top. You may have noticed I didn't do anything with the corners either. So this is going to be the edge of our hitting screen. And I thought about finishing off the drywall here, but obviously that is not very strong. And that would just get beat if a ball came in here and destroy all my hard work. So I'm going to armor this thing with a couple two by fours. We'll see how that looks. There's snow that's melting on top. I have to say that turned out pretty good. I'm happy 
with that. I never really saw this plating done on corners before, but it's obviously extremely sturdy using these two by fours. Uh, nothing is going to destroy this corner now. So happy with that. I uh, just need to get the metal there on the top rail and then obviously finish the rest of the drywall in the garage. Got a lot to go, but off to a good start. I like this concept, so I'm going to keep moving ahead with it. All right, I have my new area that ironically is going to be hidden behind my impact screen for my golf simulator finished off. So I'm gonna take my golf net mounting apparatus and transfer it over to the new spot. So I've got my bar down. Uh, that I'm going to mount my impact screen on, same way I did the net. Um, and I'm going to use this trunnion from my bed unloader um, to hang it yet. So I'd like to mount it right on this plate, corner plate that I added. That'll give me about a foot and a half be behind the screen so balls aren't um, nailing the wall or my precious new metal I put in. Um, but you can see here, this is a, an L shape and I need to basically cut one of these legs off to mount directly onto this plate here. Here's a side view of what I'm trying to do. I want to mount this baby directly to this plate. Uh, so I need to hack off one of these. I think this is just a glass filled nylon material. So I should be able to take a hacksaw and just beat that piece off. But I think, or, uh, cut that one leg off, so I'm gonna take off the clamp collar here, slide that piece off, get it over to the bench, and cut that off. All right, so I finally ordered a screen. I went with a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, 110 inches wide, 110 inches tall. So I set my bar height at 108 inches. I finalized that, added the brace here. Mounting is complete. I went with a one-to-one. -one. I know the projector's probably not gonna be able to fill it out. Um, but I'm hoping to get away with lob shots and I'm hoping that's high enough I'll still hit the screen and I don't need extra uh, baffling or, or netting above. So I'm hoping that works out okay. I think it will. I mean, if I open the face completely and give it the full lock, maybe I'll go over the top. We'll see how that works out. Might have to add a little bit of netting there, but that's not the end of the world. Uh, most of the shots should hit in the stream this way. So my next thing is um, to put a way to retract or roll up the screen, roll down the screen from below here. So I've got an idea for that. Let's see how that works out. Here is my secret weapon for rolling up and rolling down my screen. Now you may say, oh my goodness, look at that. Those sprockets are beefy, and they are. So these are 50 pitch chain, you can see here. Um, the reason I went with this, it's way overkill. Um, I don't wanna have a lot of tension on my chain uh, because my structure is not made to have chain tension. 
Um, so these are extremely overkill to make sure my chain does not skip. Um, the other thing is these were on clearance. So this is like $4 and that was $5. Uh, the most expensive part was the chain here. That was like 20 bucks. So I've got less than 30 in this setup here. Let's see how it goes on. I'm gonna let that baby cool down so I don't absolutely cook my plastic parts, trunnion and that sort of thing. So take a little bit, weld some, take a break, let it cool down, weld some. But I think I'm on the right track. This is coming together pretty cool. Got my sprocket welded on, my pipe up there, which my screen is gonna be mounted on. Got my overkill chain here, and I've got my sprocket at the bottom. So this is gonna to mount to my plating here on the corner. So I need my shaft and hand crank here so that I can raise and lower my screen from right here. So for my hand crank, I put this cool thing together out of black pipe, we'll see how it works. So I'm gonna put my sprocket here. Um, I need to, this will be mounted to the wall. I need a, a bearing sleeve. I think I'm gonna use PVC pipe for that. So pretty low tech. Um, this will be my hand crank. I'll use a piece of PVC on that also so that when you're turning it, it slides on there. So let's see, uh, put this thing together. Interestingly enough, this inch and a quarter PVC pipe fits over pretty snugly on this one inch black pipe. So I'm going to use this for a couple different things here. First one for my handle there. Yep. All right, I got my sprocket welded up on here. And I was so worried about it being square that I forgot to look at how centered it was. Um, so I know I can buy a hub for this thing, but like I said, the store I got it from, all this chain parts were on clearance. I don't know if they're handling them anymore. And uh, they didn't have any of the hubs or whatever, so I wanted to get going on this. So I shimmed it with some bar stock. And I've just forgot to uh, double check the center. So I've got it welded in there pretty good. It's not fully. Uh, but before I go ahead and grind this off and try again, I'm going to mount it and see if it works in this. I mean, I'm, I'm using a piece of PVC pipe for my linear bearing. Um, so this is not a precision deal here. So we'll see how it works in a current state. Works good. I'll take it off the wall and uh, just kind of finish welding it there. But... Well, it's not precision, but it works pretty awesome. Turning the crank, screen goes up, screen goes down. This thing is down, ready. Um, I've ordered the screen, it should be here soon, so the next thing is to pop that on. And uh, now I can move on to just uh, finishing the rest of the garage off with well, actually, I gotta get the screen on and get some turf down, get my hitting mat placed, or make a good progress. This thing, check! <laughs> 